going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the NBA Slate Starter Podcast. I'm Eric, joined with my buddy Ryan as we break down Thursday's two-game slate on DraftKings FanDuel and our sponsor, Yahoo. Our sponsor, Yahoo, two showdown slates is what we're looking at. We're going to be talking a little small, uh, can't talk, but anyway, small slate strategy as well as showdown stuff. Looking forward to this one. Uh, you know, some people don't really want to play these kind of slates, six gamers, eight gamers. I used to not like them, but when I had my friend Ryan tell me that this is some of the stuff that he dominates the most, I became very intrigued once upon a time. And I've just kind of followed his rules of how to go about, uh, uh being profitable at this. And that is playing a lot of the best plays and being willing to get off the board in very dramatic fashion. Ryan, are you looking forward to tomorrow's two gamer? And also how's tonight going for you? Uh, there's a lot of this slate still left. Unfortunately, too much Bagley to make too uh, too much noise. Uh, I had a lot, I was overexposed to Marvin Bagley. I liked his uh, the minutes were there. The production wasn't. He just missed out. Uh, I think he just got off to a slow start. But after the first quarter, he was pretty productive in those minutes. Just a rough finish for him, as he uh, he just was disappointing for that price tag. But it was the Lakers-Houston game. If you uh, games that game, that game probably are uh, winning all the money. Probably. Trey Lyles off to a hot start on DK. I thought Damian Jones was a bad play. And then all of a sudden, Damian Jones wasn't starting. And then Damian Jones, I'm like, is he a good play now? If he's going to be low-owned, possibly coming off the bench behind Len. Lots of weird things there. But uh, I was in love with that Houston-Lakers game. I was on live before lock. And all I spent the entire time doing was trying to make sure that I got to as much of those guys as possible in a – in a normal fashion, uh, watch that whole game. 13 nothing run to open overtime for Houston. The Lakers are freaking bad, but we at least got our Russell Westbrook game. Yay, that's fun. Yeah, you know? that, that worked out on FanDuel. Uh, we'll see, though. Uh, it's just, I think, Brandon Williams was, I felt like, a better play today than he was the other day just because of the ability to put – all the guys in, but I, I don't know. I guess Brandon Williams decides to take the night off when I decide to play him. So that sucks, but you know what? Hey, here we are uh, onto a two game slate. That's kind of how DFS works, Ryan. Uh, at least Utah's up 23, and I bet them at minus 19 favorites because that's what you do, right? No. I don't know what minus 19 favorites. <laughs> I laid 19 I points in an NBA game because I was so convinced that Portland was going to get murdered and uh shocker they are they're only up 22 now oh man it's gonna be a sweat no it's not it's just four minutes left in the second quarter they're up 22 uh something you guys could do speaking of being up uh hit that thumbs up that goes a long way for a subscribe button on youtube notification bell all of that is fantastic my friend ryan over there he's gonna be in town for tomorrow which is nice because i i was actually thinking you were gonna be gone tomorrow but I know the live finals coming up for a lot of people. You get to go hang out in New Orleans and, and proxy a little bit for one of our friends uh, here, uh, DeColtz, as, as he's known around Osmo. Absolute stud. Has some tickets, and you get to go partake in some New Orleans fun. So looking forward to that. Uh, Sunday, I'll have a, a fill-in, I believe. Uh, so enjoy your Sunday night. Don't do anything I wouldn't do in New Orleans. But we got a two-gamer to talk about. It's going to probably be the shortest show ever. That's why I'm kind of talking a lot here at the front end. Ryan. You ready to get going, my buddy? Let's ride. All right. We've got Brooklyn at Philly, Golden State at Denver. They're the only two games. And if you know two gamers and how they work with TNT or ESPN or whatever, they're going to be the two nationally televised games. You have one that's going to lock at 730 Eastern time, another that's going to lock at 10 p.m. Eastern time. That's going to mean that you got to be adjusting to how your lineups are doing. I know it's only a two-game slate, and I know that on a back-to-back -back, Jokic and, and then – whomever else like there's there's opportunities for for wonky things to necessarily happen denver the only team that's on a back-to-back -back of the four um but let's let's do this before we get into positions small slate strategy my friend what are you planning to do on a slate like tomorrow when you're making a lot of lineups that you would not necessarily do on a six seven eight or like today 12 game slate uh for me process really uh is not all that different i i'm pretty off the board naturally in my process. I make natural stands like that. Uh, it's okay to leave more money on the table than usual. That used to be the case on FanDuel, but after they changed their salary, uh, I mean, uh, roster construction format, that has changed. But I think 
just taking a look at ownership, making some stands on ownership, being able to take some flyers on low-owned guys uh, is how you differentiate yourself on uh, two-game slates. Look at that. Quick, concise, to the point. Let's it's, talk positions. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, it's not that much different than uh, larger slates. It's pretty, I think, similar, but uh, you still can make – I think your stands are more pronounced because of the lack of player pool and lack of options, and ownership is much more concentrated. So yes, everyone's dealt the same hands. What you do with it is uh, will differentiate yourself on a two-gamer. I like the way that you put that. I mean, we don't have to do the dumbest stuff ever. You got to find some points of differentiation, though. You got to get off the wall. You got to find some kind of stuff that can get you a little bit different rather than just, you know, jamming the same guys that are 60, 70 percent owned because uh, ownership is more concentrated as you get down in slates. Or, you know, in this case, there's just only so many options. You know, we've had concentrated slates. Don't get me wrong. I mean, Shankun was 50%, 60%, 70% in stuff, some stuff today. So concentrated happens even on a 12-game slate. But uh, we're talking about on a two-gamer, it happens naturally. And that means James Harden at 10-4 on DraftKings is going to be very popular because you need to prioritize a guy like that. Kyrie Irving, uh, Brooklyn going into Philly here. Obviously, this is a different matchup without Ben Simmons because – you know, you want to see that trade and you want to see all the pieces on the floor. But Harden versus Kyrie, I'm OK with that here. Steph Curry, 9,800 there as well. Going to be kind of, I, I'm going to assume a little forgotten as opposed to those other two guys. Plus, you get Jokic at the center spot and beat at the center spot to pay up for. So Steph Curry, uh, maybe a forgotten guy here on the slate. Maybe you get some low ownership there coming off of a dud where I expected him to play pretty well. Only attempted 12 shot attempts. He plays on a really good basketball team, and that can be problematic from time to time. You have Maxi at 7,400. Help me differentiate where you really want to go here at the top on DraftKings. Yeah, looking over at the top on DK, two games slate. Yeah, you're going to have to have interest in guys like, obviously, Harden, Kyrie, Steph Curry, just because they have the ability to be two of the highest scoring players on the slate, if not all three. Tough to get all three of them in there on a two-gamer, but there are ways to make that happen. So those are the things you have to take an eye on. I mean, Brooklyn taking on Philly should have been the Ben Simmons return uh, to the uh, city of brotherly love, but uh, he is going to get booed. I don't know how heavy the boos will be. The loudest boos I remember was KD returning to uh, Chesapeake yep. Arena in Oklahoma City. That was pretty loud. Uh, in LeBron 20. in Cleveland was insane, if you remember that. I don't know. KD, KD going back to OKC was pretty awful. It was pretty. It awful. was. I mean, think right. about it. You take. Oh the yeah, team it was to, insane. It was. In, yeah. It was insane. You lose to them in a game seven. You join them, which is man, uh, and that is. Uh, some, you didn't uh, have a televised special for the boys and Cl uh, boys and girls club of America, though, to say that you're going to Miami Beach. It's a little yeah. different. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I would leave Cleveland for Miami too, and I think most of our viewers would too. So, I don't blame yeah, LeBron for going down to South Beach. Let's be real, and uh. Uh, just looking at the guard values here, spending down jamming studs. We've been seeing Moses Moody start of late. Uh, that's all right, but guys like Jordan Poole have been playing really well. Looking at a guy like Seth Curry, he's going to be very low on three point bonus uh, for him. Uh, no, I think that's completely fine. A lot of questionable situation in Denver with Will Barton. Uh, if Will Barton's out and Bones Highland is out, we're going to have to look at guys like Facundo Campazzo maybe. If he might be pressing the more minutes, Monty Morris might need to play more minutes. Bryn Forbes, uh, three-point bonus. It's a two-game slate. And one thing, obviously, if the guy is going to play, if the guy's in the rotation, he's like automatically – you can, he's, an, he's an option. It's like a glorified showdown single-game slate just because – when they're touching the floor, anyone can have a ceiling game in a two-game slate, and their boom potential is much greater. And you'll see that in the boom bust tool tomorrow. So, and it, for me, it's just targeting low-owned guys who can get there, like potentially a Bryn Forbes that gets hot from the outside, hits four threes. And that's maybe sometimes all you need to uh, jam in another stud and little things like that. Most of these plays will not work out, but when they do, you are sweeping the floor. So, agreed. Uh, there's also late swapability when you start talking about 
where some of these guys are listed at. And Bones Highland is 3,700. He didn't play today. He ended up getting ruled out. Will Barton didn't play today. I'm assuming he's going to play tomorrow here. Uh, two different matchups, one in Sacramento, one in Golden State. And, or sorry, in Denver. They're going back to Denver. But um, it's a it's a pretty... It's a pretty easy thing to just recognize that if if you're going to have a two and a half hour gap, we probably aren't going to have that news uh, when it comes to a guy like Bones Highland. And that automatically, for me, puts him massively into play in, in a ridiculous fashion. If we're going to have a Q tag next to his name and have to wait for that news, I will try to pivot as much as I possibly can from a guy like Austin Rivers, who... Once again, short slate. If he's in the starting unit, he's in the rotation. Played 35 minutes last game, but uh, obviously absent some characters. You know, you just get that $100 and you find your way to Bones Highland and you have reduced a lot of ownership. So be very, very aware of that. We'll be talking about two games repeatedly tomorrow on the strategy show on Deeper Dive Live before lock. But inherently, that's going to be one of the things that I kind of keep my eye on is news like that. And making sure that if I have some lineups that either are either dead or if I'm trying to make a stand and I think he's going to go overlooked, there's an opportunity to just get onto a guy who's a pure scorer uh, that, you know, coming off the bench has kind of really reduced Bryn Forbes minutes here of late. He's only played 14 the last two. So uh, Bones Highland, when he's been in the rotation, has been very, very uh, active. A guy like Composo is going to jump in it today, but I'm going to just kind of write him off for tomorrow. Let's head on over to FanDuel top end Kyrie 97. Steph Curry, 91. These are very, very underpriced guys. You have James Harden at 10-2, the most expensive shooting guard, small forward for his eligibility there. Then it jumps into Tyrese Maxey, 7,500. Jordan Poole up to 6,300. Man, he's played well. Obviously, he played 34 minutes there and then 29 there against the Clips. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a guy that we know can get hot. He's going to be overpriced for a situation considering everybody's probably going to be playing in this spot, but uh, what are you kind of looking to do with somebody like that who you know is overpriced but has a crazy amount of upside? Um, you can sprinkle them in. Uh, and what you do with like something I call like secondary ownership and something you you can consider in your process is a, a combination of Steph Curry and Jordan Poole or let's see, let's see someone who's going to be very popular in tomorrow's slate. Uh, I think – we're going to get a very popular in the point guard shooting guard spot. I think we're going to get a very popular James Harden, right? So 10 to James Harden over here on FanDuel. A combination of James Harden and let's say if Will Barton were to play is going to be very popular, right? So, but the combination of James Harden and Jordan Poole will be not popular at all. It's just like looking at different pairings of what you can do with these guys will make a lot of sense. So, I think another one would be James Harden. Uh, Jordan Poole's kind of priced in an island, so he's going to be low naturally. But guys priced around him, I guess Clay Thompson's priced around him. James Harden and Clay are going to be very like a popular pairing. But if you just shift Clay to Harden, you're still getting exposure to Harden, but getting the very very low chance, but the slim chance of an upside game from Jordan Poole off the bench. So it's a it's a tricky situation, especially to monitor those type of pairings. But point guard, shooting guard on Fanduel. Terry Smexy's come down to earth, so I don't think he's that exciting to go to. I think uh, paying up for Kyrie and Steph Curry make a ton of sense. Spending down a little bit, Goran Dragic or Bones Highland will be options down there. Patty Mills will have a game at some point uh, off the bench. He can do that for you at $3,700. And uh, $3,700 on a stud-filled uh, two-game slate goes a long way. Looking around a little bit more, I think Harden. It's a fantastic spend up at the shooting guard spot. I like Clay Thompson quite a bit. We saw Kyrie put up the most efficient 50 piece in NBA history. I think he broke analytics. He had a true shooting uh, record in terms of uh, performance. So that was pretty awesome to look at. Uh, Bruce Brown is way too expensive and Jordan Poole is way too expensive, but those guys have the upside. We've seen it, but I don't recommend going there. I can't play them if I was building one lineup. No way. Uh, but other guys, uh, da questionable Danny Green's there. We might open up more minutes for Furcon Korkmaz down at 3,500. I thought Korkmaz play, would play more minutes. He seems to be a good fit for James Harden's scheme, but I guess Doc Rivers is just that bad of a coach and doesn't realize that. Uh, so 
I don't ding, know. Ding, ding. Cor- Sorry. I said, ding, ding, ding. You found it out. I've known that know what- forever being out here in LA and like, I didn't, I didn't inherit the Clippers. I didn't become like a Clippers fan, but I definitely cheered for them because I hate the Lakers. And I just thought the Clippers were really fun to watch. And the tickets were super cheap out here when I first moved out here. You'll take j- uh, super cheap tickets whenever you can, right? Oh, yeah. And Doc Rivers sucks at coaching. All right, Ryan, here's what I'm planning to do here, my friend. Why don't we talk about the Brooklyn Philly showdown over on our sponsor, Yahoo? And then at the end of Forward, we'll talk about the Golden State Denver showdown at the end of that, shall we? Yeah, that, that works. Look at that. So you have Joel Embiid, $54. So if you guys haven't played Showdown, we have a megastar, a superstar, a star, and Flex Flex. Exactly like what FanDuel runs on their stuff is what you're looking at for this Yahoo slate. It's exactly the same in terms of that, but it's different in terms of salary. We have $175 budget, $35 per player. That means a guy like Joel Embiid at 54, going to be very popular there. And in basketball, Because of how much more projectable the sport is, the number of times Embiid and Durant and Harden, those three guys are going to be your highest score in this game such a large majority of the time that I'm almost not looking at going to a guy like Tyrese Maxey. Other slates uh, with different teams especially, uh, you can make a case for getting up to that megastar. And even yesterday, we saw Jonathan Kaminga, the highest scorer in terms of Yahoo scoring for a showdown. Uh, So it can definitely, definitely happen where, where somebody comes from the midst. But for all intents and purposes, we've got Embiid at 54, Durant 51, and Harden 49. Who's your favorite of that trio? And then who are some of the value pieces you've got your eye on for this first uh, Yahoo Showdown slate? It's got to be Embiid. Finding, just getting Embiid or Harden, one of the Philly guys makes a ton of sense for me. But me just even thinking that, I think they'll be much more popular than Kyrie or Kevin Durant, who easily could light them up KD especially I think a disappointing game last time I just deferred to Kyrie we can see a KD game I think uh, KD is built for the spotlight here probably wants to show up James Harden and his antics uh it's gonna be a fun battle honestly <laughs> so weird that it didn't work out there were a ton of in those those 12 healthy games they were so like good together too so it's like disappointing we don't get to see them all pan out uh so it is what it is part of drama in the NBA yeah, I mean, I have no issues uh, if you want to play Embiid, Harden, or Durant. I think Kyrie Irving is in the priority for me. Super, super scoring dependent. But as we just clearly saw last game, drop that piece. Uh, I really like Harden, though. At that price tag, I think it, it makes you do a lot at the Megastar. Uh, but looking around, and all those guys are obviously in play for Superstar as well. Uh, looking at some value options here uh, just to help you jam in the studs. There's a couple of $10 guys that you can take your chances on that being Drogic and Claxton. Uh, Claxton mm-hmm. could easily play an additional run if Drummond's in some sort of foul trouble, some ways to get there. Another $10 play, Thibel, where steals and blocks help him out. He has shown the ability to get those uh, racked up in a hurry at times. Other guys who have uh, some value options to consider, I, I mean – it's not. It's kind of gross. There aren't many spend on options. Shake Milton's another guy at ten dollars, mm-hmm. and as is the guys of George Niang and uh, Danny Green. The ten dollar here is very valuable because it helps you jam in all those studs and rack up those raw points and those multipliers for those raw points. That's kind of how I look at the Yahoo uh, single game uh, slate. Yeah, and the mid range has just been brutal here. Outside of Maxi, I mean Tobias Harris has not benefited in a way that I thought he might in the presence of a distributor. Uh, James Harden just playing a true point guard. I mean, he's going to be a guy that's helping this team offensively in so many ways with his vision, ability, and the pick and roll with Joel Embiid. And Tobias Harris, eventually he's going to get going. I just don't really think it's going to be tomorrow. But something you need to do tomorrow if you're a new user, head over to Yahoo, deposit $10 or more, play in any paid contest, and you will get one free month of Osmo Plus Platinum. It is as simple as that. Rake is the lowest. They have great showdown contests. They, um, I don't know if they're going to have a two-gamer for tomorrow, but I can tell you one thing is that <laughs> I will be playing showdown over there. I will be playing showdown for that Golden State-Denver game 100%, and, and there are some great contests for it. You have some of the lowest rake that you're going to be paying over there. 
Um, it's just like 11, 12 percent as opposed to 15, 16, even upwards of 17 percent on DraftKings and FanDuel makes it the best site point per dollar. And now you're getting Osmo Plus just by signing up. So stop guessing, start winning. Join us here at Osmo, but do it through this Yahoo promotion. Thank you so much to them for sponsoring the Slate Starter Podcast. All right, my friend, heading over to the forward spot, top end. Kevin Durant, 10-3, seems like a good option. Uh, $3,300 more expensive than Andrew Wiggins. Clay down there, 6600 with the shooting guard, small forward option. And then I talked about Tobias Harris. Again, 6300 God, I just, I, I don't know. He ended up playing really well against Miami in a losing effort, but he's only had two games where he's attempted more than 10 shot attempts in the first six that he's played alongside J- uh, James Harden. Feels pl- problematic to me. I don't really know what to do with him. Do you have any kind of a hint? Um, I mean, it's tough. I mean, it's a two-game slate. Anything can really go, right? It's like these type of situations, I can't fault you either way just because the upside and the uniqueness of him getting there uh, is definitely possible. And buying low is what you want to do. And it makes sense to fall on him on a two-game slate and what, what, I think he's completely fine to fall on. I have no issues there. I mean, forward is kind of the place where I guess you can get different on because of how many great options there are. Aaron Gordon's also there as a pivot. Uh, the guy who I want to stay away from is probably John Kaminga. Uh, I think he might have be over-owned, while guys like Clay Thompson, obviously Kevin Durant's on this slate as well. Clay Thompson, someone who had like the target three point bonus, makes a ton of sense to go to a guy like Clay. I personally think, but on this type of slate, it, a lot of things can change. Uh, so I think Tobias Harris, just because of the lack of options, is firmly in play. And I think you have no issues if you want to go above the field on a guy like Toby. Yeah, it's I. I just I have a hard time believing that he's not going to benefit in this offense with James Harden. Uh, more than Tyrese Maxey. Now, I do I think he's going to put up the same production he did before James Harden? No, that's not the conversation, but tick for tat. I just, I find it hard to process how Tyrese uh, Maxey is playing off the ball so well. Uh, it seems, it's just really strange to me. And so, obviously, we're accumulating a sample size, but I want to be quick on some of this stuff. And Tobias is a guy I just want to be, I said yesterday, I, I, or not yesterday, I said earlier there while we were talking Yahoo Showdown that I just don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can do it for a showdown thing over there, over on Yahoo, where he falls in that mid-range. But for this two-game slate on DraftKings and FanDuel, I just feel like I have to be over the field on whatever that number ends up being. We'll see what else happens here with Denver. They're on a back-to-back. There's possibility of some of these guys uh, being out, so just be on alert with that. That's why we have news, and it shouldn't be too hard to pay attention to. Davon Reed ended up in the starting lineup here tonight. I don't expect that if you're going to get Will Barton back. Um, but it's played all right here the last two, 20 minutes, 14 and, and 27. That is very serviceable at 3,300. Um, once again, it's going to be more towards like the 18 minutes or so if he doesn't start here. But anything else here to talk about on the bottom end? Um, no. uh, Looking at the bottom end, no. Not, not really, yeah. honestly. It's just <laughs> there's like – it's just like it's a two game slate. There's t- there's a, sh- a bunch of there's a handful of options. There's not much to look at. Well, this is kind of fun. So we'll, let's let's throw this out there. We've got Kevin Durant and James Harden ten four and ten two. If the slate started this second, and I told you that they were both seventy percent owned, which one would you want more of? James Harden. That was quick. See, that's kind of what I was thinking too. But Kevin Durant, you think will be. Um, I mean, I bet they're going to be pretty close to the same ownership, but I'm with you. I want James Harden mm-hmm. more, so you I don't, don't think so. they will? No. Okay. Good talk. I think we'll get KD at much lower ownership. So you're just casually drinking water in a robe, telling me I'm wrong. No. I like it. I'm, I don't think you're wrong. Obviously, we don't know. We won't know until yeah, the game tips off. And even then, we won't know what the right ownership should have been because it's a small sample size and it's just one game. But, yeah, I think – yeah, you're, I think Harden's going to project for more, and I think Harden obviously will be higher. I don't know, obviously, but we should be higher owned, but we'll, we shall see. But that makes KD an outstanding pivot. You can play them both, no issues there. Tobias Harris is again in play here, $6,400. Got to like that price tag. Barton, if he goes, 
got to have interest there as well. Jeff Green did not play today. I think he's going to play tomorrow. Uh, cheap option to consider. We touched on Matisse Seibel. A guy with a name we haven't mentioned, I just think naturally will be low on and has an upside within him, is probably Andrew Wiggins on a two-gamer. Wiggins is pretty solid, but looking at the power forward slate, lack of options here yet again. Up top, there's obviously KD. And then there's in the mid tier, there's guys like Tobias Harris. And then bottom tier, guys like Looney. Obviously, played against Jokic the other night. I think spending a little bit up for Gordon makes a little bit more sense for me. And then on the bottom, there's the likes of Jeff Green, Nick Claxton, uh, even Jamichael Green. Uh, just a handful of options here, honestly. Nothing too great. Well, this will be fun. Yahoo Showdown. We're looking at a $56 Nikola Jokic. A $39 Steph Curry. That is a massive discrepancy. Well, there's also going to be a massive discrepancy in terms of what that megastar roster ship is, the 2X spot. Uh, it is going to be massively towards Jokic, and rightfully so. Uh, if he's playing on this back-to-back, you know what to do. You play him. If he's not to Marcus Cousins' season, I'm going to project him outrageously well again. Steph Curry, 39. Wiggins, 24. Clay 23. Aaron Gordon, 20. Again, this might just sound like monotonous uh, stuff to you, but head over to awesomeo.com. Check out the projections we have. Uh, have the Fantasy Cruncher add-on. Be able to take a look at this because there's some fascinating ways to go about building. Now, the mega star for me, if I'm making 20 lineups, they're all going to be Nikola Jokic. But outside of that, outside of Steph Curry, Nikola Jokic, is there one player, Ryan, that you would be more willing to put up in the superstar spot at least? Maybe not the mega star, but the superstar spot that would outpace one of those two. Jokic or Steph Curry? Yeah, who would who would be the contrarian 1.5x play for you? The superstar is 2x. So, no, I'm looking at the at Yahoo. They have megastar and superstar. So I'm saying the megastar no, is mega 2x. Star is, yeah. So I'm saying who would be the contrarian guy to put up in the superstar? I'm saying that I find uh, it hard to believe I would build a single lineup out of 100 where I didn't have Jokic or Steph in the megastar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then looking at the superstar, probably uh, Andrew Wiggins would be a contrarian enough to target. Oh, my uh, God. He, he can definitely pick up steals and blocks. Otherwise, Clay Thompson or Aaron Gordon would be the next tier. No issues if you want to circulate those guys around and cycle them guys in and out. But to jam in a guy like Jokic, you're going to have to look at the value. And it's guys like Bones Highland, Jeff Green, Jermichael Green, Moses Moody. John Kaminga here's 14. You can definitely play him. Uh, all those guys should help you jam in the likes of Curry, who's really cheap here, and Jokic uh, as well. So yeah, I think you can get him in both, but you have to spend down across the board after that. Portland is down 26 points. Just second half just started. It's insane. I will say, though, Reggie Jackson – I don't, I don't know. I'm surprised he's 2% or 2.3% 2 in the uh, $44 on FanDuel, up to 227 coming off the heels of a horrendous game last night. I just told myself if he played well, I bet he would be popular at 7,100. So we'll see. Uh, you're going to still need rust. There's that. But, man, we are on absolute Brandon Williams watch right now. We need something on FanDuel out of that guy or it's just not looking pretty. Heading to the center spot, top end, Jokic, Embiid, Ryan, that is the question that is going to get asked 48 times in YouTube chat tomorrow, and everybody will say that they have an answer, but really only matters when it comes from you because, you know, you've proven to be pretty good at this. Jokic or Embiid for tomorrow? Jokic or Embiid for tomorrow? Hmm. On DraftKings, uh, it's got to be Jokic. Uh, it's got to be Jokic where you get the upside for triple-double, double-double. Yeah, it's got to be Jokic and potentially no Barton. Uh, it just, it's going to be Jokic tomorrow versus Embiid. Perfect. Uh, but I, there's Andre Drummond, there's Demarcus Cousins, and Boogie. Are you going to build lineups with Boogie and Jokic in the same lineup tomorrow? Yeah, I've done that time and time again. I have no issues doing so. A lot of people have their groups built in. Um, I mean, I don't fall to people who do the groups. It makes sense. But uh, sometimes I am willing to take that negative correlation in two game slates, even one game slates, just to get a little different. And that little different has paid off in times past, but does it probably won't, it shouldn't work out more times than not. But uh, looking at other guys here, I mean, 3,200 Claxton, I think I'll sprinkle some of them in. 
Embiid versus Drummond, that's always the thing. Embiid's known to build real estate in his head, and Embiid always looks forward to that matchup. But I think Jokic's upside of late, I mean, he put up 45 in the first half today. That's just ridiculous. The only thing that's going <laughs> against Jokic, it's the back end of a back to back. But this is the MVP like showdown. Like both games are national mm-hmm. television. Both these centers know they're neck and neck for MVP. I don't know what the Vegas odds are. But I'm, I'm sure Embiid is now favored, but he shouldn't be that much favored over Jokic. I think it's. I, I personally think it's a coin flip. I could even, I actually am more on the Jokic side of things than the Embiid side, but I am too. Uh, most people probably don't believe like that at this moment, but this is the showdown where they want to put their team on their back and show the NBA world which player is the MVP. And that is a narrative that I want to buy into. And Joel Embiid, I would like minus 130 on DraftKings, minus 130. Mm-hmm. Nikola Jokic, plus 170. It's, it's, yeah, tomorrow it might shift based on who plays better on a national TV game. So, no pressure, Embiid. No pressure. Heading over to the top end here Jokic 11 4 on FanDuel, 10 8 for Embiid. Demarcus Cousins 6K, Drummond 5,600. I find it hard to believe that I'm going to build many lineups that don't have either Jokic or Embiid. So, to round it out here, Ryan, top end, pick one of those two. Over here. Slightly different salary. Yeah, it's you can't jam in both, so you have to nail the guy who does it, right? You have to nail yep. one of them. And there could be a chance where both of them just don't work out. And it could just be flat. And that's when you're jumping the field. Uh, but we'll see. I, I still got to ride with Yogi here. It's close, though. Uh, $600 on a two-game slate. With so many studs can be a big difference, so. Yeah, Jokic and Embiid, uh, Jokic yet again. I could be wrong. I most certainly can be wrong. I just like what Jokic has done over the last two weeks. And Embiid now playing with Harden. The ceiling isn't really as big as once believed. But it's going to be a showdown, man. Look at these totals, both high-scoring games. So It's fair. I, I got to say, though, the Golden State Warrior, I'm looking forward to the most to seeing what he does tomorrow is James Wiseman, who's been cleared to play basketball with the Santa Cruz Warriors here on Thursday night. He's going to be playing, it looks like, against the Stockton Kings. So get ready for that one. Uh, If you're a basketball purist, you want to see the number two pick uh, from, you know, what, last year technically. Uh, Yeah, last year. If you want to see him back in action, this will be your chance. Uh, Good luck finding that one on the old television. I don't think NBA.TV is going to be carrying that one for me, but... Guys, that was the NBA Slate Starter Podcast. Quick, nice, efficient, easy. Anything else you wanted to round it out with? Did you have any other center you wanted to talk about? Yeah, I think Andre Drummond deserves a pretty significant mention. I believe LaMarcus Aldridge is still out. And uh, Drummond, barring on a foul show, should be on the court a lot. And he's underpriced if he's going to be on the court for every Embiid minute. So uh, I really like Drummond, uh, even on FanDuel and DK just for the situation presented uh, for tomorrow's slate. 24 minutes, 47.8 uh, fan tool points over on Char- against Charlotte. Completely smashed them. Uh, played very well uh, by all means. And, you know, I expect people to play well when you have Kevin Durant and Kyrie on your team. But, Ryan, that's the Slate Starter Podcast. Any final words for the people? No, thanks so much for tuning in. Five-star reviews would be fantastic. Subscribe if you find us on YouTube. The subscribe uh, it's a, it goes a long way, especially watching our show. So we appreciate your guys' support. Uh, I know it's March, but it's, it gets fun now. It, it gets a lot of fun now. It gets fun. Everybody becomes a college basketball talent, including myself, because, again, I'm betting and watching college basketball year-round. I don't sleep because I have dog and him. No, looking for any excuse to watch sports all day. He's Ryan. He's still rocking the robe. I'm Eric. I'm still rocking the suburbs, just like Choir Ryan did. We'll see you guys later. Bye.